The show is called Orca Dreams, and it's uh, first of all, it's a show of just drawings. I'm not a painter, I just draw. And my background is in biology, so there is a very strong biological influence that weaves throughout the show. But what I like about it is that, having spoken to quite a few people about these pieces, is that if you're not a biologist, you will probably see different things in them than somebody who's actually trained in biology. And I think that's great. So there's not one interpretation to any of these pieces. It's what you see in them. And if you're a biologist, you may see something different than if you're not, but that's okay. So this is the piece that, for me, started the show. And well, that gave me the general idea. And um, it started out with, I was in the Royal BC Museum and I was looking at skulls. I was drawing a lot of skulls for a while about a year, two years ago, and this is based on an orca skull. So the overall shape is recognizable, and a skull is made up of a number of different bones, and if you know your orca skulls, you can probably find all the different bones that are in this skull. And it's a fascinating shape, and the bone is a fascinating texture, but I looked at it and I just thought, I want to turn that into wood. So I took the general shape, I took the outlines of all the bones, and I looked at lots and lots of driftwood. And I basically drew the skull in wood. So again, it's a piece that I know what it is, and I've had a few people, very few, come up and go, that's an orca skull. But I've also had some very, very interesting conversations with lots of people as to what they see in this. <laughs> because most people clearly don't know what an orca skull looks like and there's no reason why they should. So everybody sees something different than this. And that's sort of one of the fun things about this show. So it plays a little bit with um, what you're familiar with, with what is, is this thing real? Is it made up? Um, is it comp sort of composed of several real things, but you end up with something that ultimately is very surreal. So you can play with those kinds of ideas and try to interpret what you see. So that's what started it all. And there are a few other pieces in this corner that are also based on orca bones. Uh, this is an entire spine. There's a little, I think there's a few pieces missing up here, but it's an entire spine of an orca, but it's distorted. So um, I was going for sort of a, a water drop, teardrop kind of shape, and to make the bones fit that, I had to change them a little bit. And it ended up looking to me like a totally different little animal with lots of little feet. And uh, I think it's quite adorable. <laughs> again, different people may see different things in it, but that's how this one came about. So that one is an entire spine. These two are uh, individual vertebrae, but uh, to me, they also look like little, like, like creatures, basically, and you can try to figure out what kind of creatures they are. Uh, they are very interesting vertebrae in that this particular animal actually had um, a degenerative condition of the spine. So normally, vertebrae would be quite smooth, but like all these outgrowths, is that's not what a normal orca vertebra looks like, but these particular specimens are actually drawn very precisely. In terms of realism, they're probably the most realistic drawings in the show, but they look weird because the actual object was a very interesting, visually very interesting object. So that's what drew me to them. So, <clears throat> That's kind of where it started. They didn't all originate at once, but they're sort of in one corner here and they're all about orcas and orca bones. Um, moving over here, we've got uh, a few shells that are fairly realistic. So we've got a Pacific oyster shell and that's, I think, a frilled dog winkle. So two fairly realistic. These are in ink, the ones we just looked at were pencil. So these are stippled ink drawings. And at one point I decided I wanted to go big and sort of do a very large piece in ink. 
and um, the subject matter I chose is the opposite of that. So I basically took things, or I started out thinking about things that are microscopic, and thought, let's play with scale, let's do something interesting with them, and just bring these things that most people have never seen because they're microscopic out onto a very large drawing. So that's how the big one in this corner came about. And uh, this is the largest drawing I've ever done. And um, most of the things on it, some of them are entirely made up. Some of them are, if you're a biologist, certainly recognizable as to what type of organism it is. And some, if you get the right type of person in here, could probably put a Latin name to it. But <laughs> I can't for most of them. But overall, it's, um, you could interpret it as a sort of a science fiction landscape type thing. It's got a very space agey feel to it to some degree. But what I find interesting about this piece is that the items that to most people probably look most outlandish are actually things that do exist, maybe not precise, but a biologist would recognize them. Whereas there are some things on here like these, uh, these fish-like shapes in the background. They clearly are fish-like shapes, but they are completely made up. Sort of following the general pattern of what you see in some of these things and designing a fish-like shape that sort of looks like that. And just putting it into this microscopic landscape. So this piece is actually called Orca Dreams. And yeah, that's that one. So we've got the ink, we've got the graphite, and I've got a few pieces that are colored that are hanging in, a, <clears throat> in the front of the gallery. Okay, so this one is called um, Unraveled. It's one of the, I've got, well, two about the same size here, but this is, I don't normally go this big in colored pencil. So this is not a painting, this is a pencil drawing. It's done in colored pencil, and colored pencil is a medium that surprisingly enough, is a lot slower than stippling in ink because most people look at the ink work and go, oh my God, all those little dots, that must take forever. And it is slow, but you only have to go over each area once. Whereas in color pencil, uh, each of those feathers, there are eight or nine layers of color all on top of each other to end up with that effect. So color pencil is very, very slow work, but it does give beautiful effects. So, um, and this piece started out with a walk on the beach. <laughs> so, um, it was sometime last year, I don't remember exactly when, but it was the time of year that the geese were molting. So I walked along the beach and I found a whole bag full of feathers. So I decided I wanted to do something with these feathers. And uh, thought about it for a while, and this is different works of art I do sort of they originally like the idea comes from different places and this one it was just I woke up one morning and thought floating feathers like it just came to me which doesn't always happen but this is this part of the drawing so it sort of came for me and that's how it started and this is a drawing that gradually grew I, it took me a while to decide what to do with it so I started out with the feathers and then I had I already had this but this is a very interesting piece of driftwood that I also found on Willow's Beach. It's partially burnt, uh, very organic shape. And one of the things I found very interesting talking to visitors of the gallery is that I put it there because I see a very specific animal in it. But so far, nobody has seen the same thing. So we've had five different interpretations of what this piece of drift would look like, at least. And. Uh, I find that really, really fascinating because to me, I look at it and I'm like, that's a bird. Clearly, that's a bird. <laughs> but so far, nobody has seen it. So to me, it has an eye here. This is where the beak would go. It's got folded back wings that kind of do this and a very short tail. So to me, bird, feathers, that goes together. Mm -hmm. But we've had uh, a lot of people see a dog. Some people see a skull. We've had seal and we've had muskrat. So lots of different animals in that one piece of wood, which again, I find fascinating, the way people react to the same shape and what they see in it. And uh, the last piece, the rocks down here, 
uh, took me a long time to decide what to put in there. So this actually sat in my living room for about a month before I decided how to finish it. But in the end, I was just like, okay, that's what I'm going to put in there. And I think it worked out quite nicely. So that is that one. And the one hanging next to it um, <clears throat> is, um, doesn't have quite as detailed a backstory. Just, I wanted to try drawing some water. So that's what, just splashing water at the top, uh, sorry, at the bottom. And the top is, uh, I like the idea of crumpled paper. So to go with the water, I thought, let's just do a fish out of crumpled, pa crumpled paper. And I was like, how easy is it actually going to be to make a fish out of crumpled paper? But it's surprisingly easy. <laughs> there are probably other shapes that would be harder to do, but I ended up with three or four decent paper fish, and this is the one that ended up in the piece. So, um, yeah, that is that one. I like the I like these the, the reflection, the effects of the blue and the paper. So that kind of ties the two pieces together. And uh, yeah, that's that piece. So those are two what I would call sort of surreal, very large colored pencil pieces. There are two in the gallery. There's one in the window, but there are two pieces in the gallery that are also colored pencil, and they are actually very realistic pieces of just seaweed that's tangled up in very interesting colors and sort of shapes. Again, beach walk in January, you get all the seaweed that's washed up after the winter storms. And I enjoy textures and I enjoy patterns. So those knots of seaweed were just absolutely gorgeous. And what's unusual about them, again, this is not a painting. This is a colored pencil drawing. It's just Basically, the, the pencil covers the entire page or the entire paper, so it kind of looks... A lot of people walk in and think this is a watercolor, but uh, it's a drawing. So there's that one, which I assume is bulk help, and there's another one over there, which is the one whose name I always forget, but the one with the funky leaves. So that one is called Surf Tangle, so it's basically a whole bunch of seaweed tangled in the surf.